especially happy today because I have met two folks uh, at my church uh, uh, yesterday during the service and they're two missionaries and I was so blessed to see them come and we're delighted to have with us today Danny and Judith Williams, missionaries to Nepal, Nepal and also to India. So it's a real joy to have y'all with us today and thank you for uh, agreeing to have this little set down conversation with us today and uh, if you would just um Explain a little bit, you know, how God calls you maybe to the mission field and and uh, where you've been, uh, the, you know, the ministry that you're doing. Uh, really what's going on in other parts of the world that, you, that, that people would love to hear about. So, uh, Danny, if you would just share a little right. bit. Thank you, Pastor. I just wanted to say we enjoyed the service yesterday and your ministry and uh, the worship and all. We just were refreshed yeah. and uh, really had a, a wonderful time. And... Uh, but we were both called at an early age, really, to the ministry, even though we didn't know each other back then. And um, But we were uh, in our late 40s, both of us, before we actually started to, to do mission work internationally. Mm -hmm. And, of course, as a pastor for years, and, and uh, we had always done mission work. We had always uh, been doing something to uh, bring people to the Lord and trying to pastor churches, but the fact is that God had called us. You know, everybody's called us a missionary. Amen. Everybody, even everybody. over their back fence or what, you know, down at the store, wherever, everybody's called us a missionary, but not everybody's called to international cross-cultural work uh, in a totally different environment than what they were raised in or where they came from, but that's what God called us to and prepared us all of our lives. We are just... Uh, I'm amazed at, at uh, my age, and I, I won't tell everybody what age I am right now, but uh, at my age, to, to what God has done to prepare us and make us into what he wants us to be. Amen. Not what we want to be necessarily, and it doesn't look like necessarily the way we think or whatever, but God makes us the way he wants us to be, to be able to minister to the people we have. Many years ago, I had a series of dreams about... Uh, preaching to people that I'd never seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were different colors. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and most of them were brown. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I don't know what you're doing, Lord. I don't understand this. But those dreams came to pass the first time I went to India. Amen. And God has blessed that ever since. Hallelujah. You want to add anything to that? I just thank the Lord for the call upon my life from eight years old. I knew that I was called to do something internationally, and it was, uh, I was 48 years old when I had the first trip, the first opportunity to go to Africa, and uh, I felt like I was right at home, right where I was supposed to be, and I enjoyed just ministering to women internationally. It's the joy of my heart. Praise God. Yeah, that is... The thing about it, when you know that you know that you're doing the will of God, yes. that's all the difference in the world. Yes. And I can tell by this conversation that your passion, both of you, is missions. Absolutely. And I can see it in your expression. I can hear it in your voice. And I'm thankful for folks. You know, God doesn't call us all to the same mission field. Right. Uh, I can relate a little bit. I left my home church. Uh, and, and came to Edenton and I never went back. Mm -hmm. So everybody's got a mission field. Mine That's just right. happens to be in Edenton, North Carolina, pastoring faith Pentecostal his church. Yes. And yours is international to go where I can't go, but we all have the same mission. Exactly. And I'm thankful for our missionaries and I'm thankful for you too. And uh, Dan, if you would just share with us a little bit of uh, what y'all are doing? Are you training pastors? Are you planting churches? Uh, uh, and how the growth has happened in Nepal and okay. India and the places that you and Judy have been? Well, uh, we are International Pentecostal Oldness Church missionaries, and so we're there to help build our network. Though we are kingdom people, we Amen. we minister to lots. We minister to literally thousands of pastors in Nepal, mm -hmm. and uh, and. And we started with just a few churches back a little over three years ago, 
And in three years, we have grown to 450 churches. Hallelujah. And uh, that represents over 25,000 people. And as national director, has been appointed as national director, as national director, I've had that responsibility. And it's been a joy because what's happened is this is God. This, is what, this wasn't me. It's not my abilities uh, yeah. for sure. It's God, what he put in my heart over the years that all came in, in missions, but all came to fruition in Nepal. Yes. It's yeah. the right time, the right place. It's the timing of God. Mm. And so he, he gave me a strategy. We worked that strategy, and it has been a successful strategy. And we're continuing to grow. Uh, God has placed in our, our heart a burden to train pastors. I love pastors. I was a pastor for I almost 30 years, and I love pastors. I, I love what the local church does. If it wasn't for the local church, we wouldn't even have be able to do what we do because it, it is local people that support us. It's local churches that support us, and that keeps us on the field to be able to do it. Everybody that supported us, everybody that's been a part of our ministry has got a part of that. In, in the heavenly account Amen. because that's what, how God does it in partnerships. You have to do that in the local church, tithes and offerings to the local church, offerings to missionaries mm -hmm. is the way that the body of Christ operates in the kingdom of God. And I, and I read the Bible that when you give to the things of God, God blesses. Yes, he does. You know, yeah. now you can just give to a lot of things, but if it's not of God, yeah. he not, he's not obligated to bless it. That's but right. when you give to the things of God, he will bless it. In fact, he even counts it for righteousness yes. in Second Corinthians. It counts it that what we're doing good, we're doing the things of God, yes. even in our giving. So I thank God for what uh, the partners he's given us, the people that has, has helped us. It's been a blessing. Yeah, I train pastors. I do lots of what we call inquiry meetings mm -hmm. where they come and learn about the, the IPHC, where they come and learn about what our vision is for Nepal where we come and learn about how we're going to do this together. And, uh, and that's how this begins our relationship with these pastors. We've done that all over Nepal. We've had uh, literally, we've had tens of, we had dozens and dozens of meetings in the last three years all over Nepal. We've traveled and traveled and traveled and uh, God is blessed every time that we've gone out. Every time we've gone out, we've had increase. Praise and, God. Uh, and then, with the, all the churches, we've been able to begin to start schools. Schools of ministry are beginning this year. We have five of them right within the Kathmandu Valley area. And, uh, you know, if people don't know where Nepal is, we're sandwiched between India and China. Mm -hmm. And it's the home of Mount Everest, the Himalayan Mountains. And so, uh, literally, we could see Mount Everest on a very, very clear day, the top of it, from where we lived in Kathmandu. Uh, it's amazing when I see the mountains, I see God. Yeah. You know, I see I see the majesty of God, yes. and uh, I felt like I traveled a lot uh, all over the world. But when I see the highest mountain in the world and the peaks that are there along with it, with several of the highest peaks in the world, it's just a the the I, I see the strength of God, I see the beauty of God, I see the creation of God, mm -hmm. and He has just shown Himself to us at times, Judy. Because of what we have, she's done a lot with the, the ministry of the ladies. Yes. I have been so blessed um, to be able to minister to the leadership, women leadership. The Lord impressed upon my heart several years ago that because of the vast population in the areas we were going, I would not be able to reach everyone that I wanted to reach so that I was to pour into the women. And so we held one of the first IPHC Women Leadership Conferences. Great and it job. was just an amazing time. And after that, we've been able to hold several others all throughout the valley and then go up into some of the mountain areas and reach the women that typically do not have anyone to come in that area. And so that's been a joy. And along with that, the Lord has also just really opened my heart and my eyes to the um, plight and difficulties of the refugees. Mm -hmm. So I met a beautiful Pakistani family, refugee family, that are in Nepal, and the Lord gave us a very special relationship. And 
Sometimes you minister from the pulpit, sometimes you minister in your home, and for this lady and I, we spent a lot of time over coffee in the coffee shop just sharing and caring. And um, I have found that if you just show these women that you love them and you care about them, yes. then they open their hearts to you. And that has been a blessing to me. They have blessed me as God has given me opportunity to reach out to them. It, you know, it, it sounds like, and it, and it is so true, when it comes down to ministry, it just comes down to three things. It comes down to loving God, loving people, and serving the world. Amen. So, and that looks like what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. You're just loving God, and you're loving people. People that I would never get to reach, but yet I have people here that I can reach. That's right. So it just comes down to us loving God, yeah. and loving people, and serving the world. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate so much your serving the world and doing doing your ministry where you are. And it's a real, it's a, it's a real joy for me to sit here and have this conversation with you. And, and I, I, I can sense in your conversation that your passion is missions. Mm -hmm. and, and you're so true. All of us will not go where you go, but all of us have a role to do something in the kingdom. Yes. Because we are kingdom people. Yes. We're God's people. Yes. We're God's children. We're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We've been made the righteousness of God. And I'm grateful to labor and co-labor together with you in ministry. And I just appreciate it so very much. Uh, Danny, when you first started out, did, did we have how many churches? Or did we have any churches in this area? And well, do we, we have more yeah, churches we, we had some churches in the area, but we had, we had basically had uh, some problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we only had like six churches. And then I wondered about two or three of those. Uh -huh. But... Uh, you know, as as we began, uh, there were many problems. I mean, there's challenges when the increase comes to the kingdom because the enemy of our lives does not want the kingdom to go forward. No, he doesn't. He doesn't want any of our kingdoms to go forward. Nebuchadnezzar said that after he was restored back to his right mind, he said, my kingdom and its glory has come back. We all have a kingdom. Mm -hmm. God has made us a little kingdom. Mm -hmm. that, that we uh, oversee, mm -hmm. and we do that. Now, the biggest kingdom, of course, is God's kingdom, and our kingdom means little mm -hmm. uh, when you compare it to his kingdom. But he does give us glory in our own lives. But we, we've given up a lot. We, we mm -hmm. understand that as missionaries. We've given up seeing our grandchildren and our children grow and our grandchildren um, grow, uh, and, and we gave up a, a lot of their years. Uh, to do that. But you know, when God, God says, when you give up for him, he will give you back. That's where the 130 and 60 fold comes That's in. That's right. Is when you give up for God, mm -hmm. then he'll give up for you. Because we have children and, children and grandchildren, and they call us Grand Danny, Grand Judy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in many parts of the world yeah, these days. And it's just a blessing yes. that we've been able to input in so many people's lives. And uh, one, of, one of the young ladies we visited yesterday, in fact, uh, afternoon after church, that, that I know since she was five years old, that married one of, the, one of the missionary young men that came to Nepal to do some mission work. And uh, it's, it's just a blessing to see the growth mm -hmm. and what's happened in these people's and children's lives if they've grown up. And... Uh, we loved uh, being in that role as fathers and mothers, and uh, we loved being in the apostolic role and doing a new work and a new thing. And uh, again, the challenges are there, but everybody has those challenges in their life. And that's what I was coming to because God wants to give us the power to overcome every challenge in our life. Amen. And it's Amen. available. It's available. Yes, it is. We can access the power of his kingdom. We can access the blood of Jesus Christ. We can access the healing power. We can access the prophetic. We can access all of these things. But the thing about it is we've got to understand that we have access. Yes. And he's given us that access. When, when the kingdom is available for all of us to be able to have God, and we have been in situations uh, over the years, uh, I have been threatened to be killed. Mm -hmm. 
to just doing the gospel. I've been threatened to be burned alive. I've been threatened to be cut in little pieces. I've been threatened to be shot. And uh, I've been threatened uh, to um, uh, be bombed. Mm -hmm. And uh, But we're still here. Amen. And God's still on the throne. Amen. Yes. And God was on the throne the whole time. And we, we don't pay attention to threats. We don't pay attention to those kind of things. We pay attention to loving people Amen. and caring. Let God take care of the rest. That's awesome. You know, I was just thinking about that too. We're living in a world now, and the last three months has become very different. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had, we're in a time now of this pandemic, and it's a global crisis, yes. a global health crisis. But you know, through it all, God's been faithful. Oh, yes. Yes. God is blessed. Yes. Ministry goes on. Yes. The church marches on. Amen. Yes. We've become the church now that we just don't come to church. We're going out as the church. Mm -hmm. And we're being the church in a time that we really need to let our light shine. That's true. Thank and I, I'm so thankful that the church is shining. This is going to be our finest hour yes. Yes. as the church of Jesus Christ. Yes, can. We can be the arms yes. of Christ now. We can be the hands that reach out. We can be the hearts that love and care. And I've seen God do so many things in the last few months that, that has just amazed me. Yes. Uh, I've seen him save people uh, by listening to internet sermons and internet conversations just like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, God's really opened up a, a new realm of ministry for Faith Pentecostal Holiness Church. I was sharing with uh, Kurt um, that uh, I got a call yesterday, uh, yeah, I believe it was yesterday, of a, a young man that, that I haven't, I knew his daddy pastored the Brentwood PH Church, and his daddy now has gone on to be with the Lord, but he, he called me, and he was weeping and crying, and I asked him what was wrong. He said, I just want to call you and, and ask you. He said, I pastor a church in Tarboro, but I go to church at Faith Pentecostal on his church on the Internet. Mm -hmm. He said, so the ministries that you folks have started, wow. don't stop it when all this is over. Yes, let's exactly. keep the word going. Let's keep the, let's keep the word out. Encouragement. Yes. And I want to encourage all the other pastors that if you started an internet mm -hmm. ministry, by all means, continue it. There's still some people totally. that hear it. it. Uh, I, I, we, I, we need to gather. Yes. We need to fellowship. Yes. We need to come in and get filled and then go flow. That's right. But while we're doing that, let's, let's do what we've been doing. Let's, let's use everything we can to yes. get the gospel out. And that's what we're trying to do. And then on top of that, now we have this crisis of this young man's life that was taken mm. uh, so senseless. It's so awful what happened to this young man. I believe it, it just it broke my heart when I saw it on TV. And, uh, and I want us to pray for his family. Yes. I want us to pray for healing in this nation. Amen. I want us to pray that God would stir something in us. Racism has no place, no, no place in whatsoever. the world, in the church. It needs to be sent back from hell That's really right. where it originated. No we don't need that. We're God's children. God created us all. We just may have different skin colors, but God created us all. He, he loves did. us all. So it's my passion that we pray for this nation yes. and for its healing. And we're going to do that in just a few okay. minutes. But I did want to... To say one more thing too about uh, Danny and Judy, uh, I I have I have felt a kindred spirit with you in our mm -hmm. conversations, and when I saw you yesterday, you know sometimes you see people and you just feel like I've got a connection. Mm -hmm. Well, I do, and I and I, I'm so thankful Appreciate for what that. God is doing and putting you in my life and mm -hmm. in my path. And I've known y'all probably in passing through the years, but never sat down and really had a conversation like we've had this morning and like we're having right now. So my prayers are with you. Our thoughts Thank are you. with you. Faith Pentecostal so Holiness Church is with you. Thank and you. We, we do want to help serve and, and minister to you folks in, in any way that we can. With that said, on July the 28th, uh, if you're in the Edenton area, uh, mm -hmm. they will be ministering for us at Faith Pentecostal Holiness Church on that Sunday morning at 1045. So I would like to encourage you, and if you're in the area, you don't mm -hmm. have a church home, come on out and be with us. And you can hear uh, Danny and Judy share a little bit more and preach. And like I, I want them to know, you just come and you're at liberty to do what the Holy Spirit lays on Thank your you heart. July the 26th, Faith Pentecost Holiness Church at 1045. 
So we're just excited about looking forward to you being with us. And thank you for agreeing to sit down and talk sure. with us today and share with us your heart and your passion. I'm going to ask you, Danny, as we kind of close our conversation, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to lead us in prayer. And let's pray okay. for the nations. Okay. Let's pray for our nation and what yes. we're going through right now with this crisis. And let's pray that the light and the love of Christ would shine through. Okay. I saw something on the internet that really touched my heart. Okay. That, uh, Martin, the, uh, Martin Luther King said, he said that darkness will never put out darkness. Only light will put out yes. darkness. Right. And hate will never get rid of hate. Only love That's will right. get rid of that. So let's love like Jesus loved, and let's overcome. God bless you. Let's just join hands and have a prayer. Now, Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your wonderful works. You are a kind and good God. Yes, you are, Lord. The evil in this world, Lord, we come against. The things that pastor is talking about, the prejudice in lives, there's no place in God's church, in God's people, for prejudice or, or anything about color or racism. It's ridiculous. We're all people of different nationalities and, co and color. We're all people that can relate to one another. This is human life, Lord. And Lord, we just pray comfort in the family of this man. Lord, we, we pray that you will bring the justice that needs to be brought. We pray, God, that you will change hearts and, and lives. Lord, and all over this nation, Lord, we have so many in this nation that need to change and come to the things of God. Lord, we do pray for a revival in this nation that will touch the lives, touch the hearts of the people, Lord. Not just their minds, God. We want, to, we want their minds to change for the things of God, but we want their heart to change because, Lord, when you saved us, you saved our hearts, you saved our minds, you saved our bodies. You saved us all, Lord, and we can be whole in you. Lord, there's so many people hurting today. There's so many people in need today. There's so many people in fear today. There's so many people in doubts and unbelief and, and all the cares that come against their life. We pray healing in their life. We pray, God, an intervention of the Holy Spirit. We pray a divine encounter of God that will totally change their lives, that will totally bring them into the understanding how much our great God, Jehovah God, Jesus Christ, loves them by His Spirit and His power and how He's come to change their life. But we, He will never overcome what our free wills are. He, we will be asked and we will have to receive ourselves the things of God because it takes a confession in our minds and in our mouths to see salvation come into our life. That we are sinners. We're all sinners saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. This nation is full of sinners that needs to be changed by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help those that to just reach out and receive your love, Lord. Receive your grace, Lord. Receive your change in their life. And we give you praise and honor and glory. And someone's hurting today. Someone, their heart is hurting yes. so deeply. Yes. Yes. And I encourage you to just to turn to Jesus. Yes. I encourage you to let yes. him touch your inner being yes. and lift you up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That back yes. that is hurting. I, I, I speak healing into that yes. back. I speak healing on uh, yes. uh, the, the strain in the neck and the strain in, in the back shoulder. I pray in the name of Jesus, be healed in Jesus' name. God, your healing never changed. Your love never changed. Yes. You've never changed. Amen. And we believe you for good things in people's lives today. Many others that are in need, and we pray that you will touch them and bless them and lift them up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. My hope is built on nothing less. Then Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame 
but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend. Trust